weapon variants are returning in Halo Infinite. We can confirm they're returning in campaign, but I doubt that's where they'll stay. In this video, we'll go into the effects on gameplay they have, the implementation in the sandbox, and how crazy these variants should be. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So it was confirmed in the last Ask343 update video talking about the sandbox and different elements within Halo Infinite and they were asked a question about weapon customization and this is what they had to say. Will there be weapon upgrades in the campaign? I'll say early on we toyed around with that idea of, of adding weapon upgrades into the game, being able to customize your weapons. And this started leading us down the road of, well, you have customized weapons, you're gonna want an expanded inventory. We, we started really heading down this rabbit hole and they're all features that we liked and we thought were really cool. The, the game started to veer away from what we felt like Halo was, was all about. Be able to find and unlock um, some cool weapon variants, which is which is really exciting as you're getting into these encounters and finding new weapons. So it sounds like Halo 5 style weapon variants are coming back in Halo Infinite. This is a huge change to the weapon sandbox and a really big implication when it comes to not only just the gameplay, but also monetization, as most likely these will be tied into the multiplayer. But how will this all work out? Well, in this video, we're gonna break that down. So if you guys like these kind of analytical videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you wanna see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as a ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So 343 initially tried out weapon attachments and upgrades when it comes to Halo Infinite. To me, this really sounds like something they tried to play off maybe the Call of Duty series with the Gunsmith, which has been super popular with the Call of Duty franchise. And maybe they thought, well, we have trying to put an emphasis on player choice and customization. Why not bring to that to the weapons as well? As Halo's never really had really in-depth customization when it comes to the weapons, besides like a cool skin. In Call of Duty, you can change the stock, the magazine size, sights, barrels, and perks and stuff like that to kind of improve the performance of the weapon to kind of your play style in a way. So maybe they tried doing this in a similar way, but obviously that's a total rip off of Call of Duty and doesn't really fit the style of Halo. So what it sounds like to me that 343 decided to go pull out the Halo 5 sandbox and go with the weapon variant style, which actually might be the better option because I know a lot of people love the Super Fiesta in Halo 5 with all these crazy weapon variants, which are super fun to utilize. And I think we had a bit of a tease of the weapon variants when it comes to the gameplay demo that we had in July in 2020. I pulled out some screenshots here to showcase you guys what I'm talking about. So we had the VK-78 Commando. When you walk over for the first time, you see Tactical Rifle Kinetic Auto. We've never had weapon descriptions like this within the game so why provide this option when most weapons are supposed to be intuitive and easy to use like they've mentioned previously when you first play the game i suspected this previously as you would need these kind of descriptions because if you have multiple variants of the same kind of gun you're going to need some kind of just quick easy to read description and kind of let people know what you're getting yourself into when you're picking up this weapon though interesting thing when you dropped that m40 within the gameplay demo it only says pick up M40. It doesn't actually say what kind of weapon it is, which is interesting. The Ravager though, on the other hand, does give a bit of description about how the weapon performs and stuff like that. Where the other weapons that were showcased within the demo, like the Pulse Carbine, Plaza Pistol and Mangler don't have any descriptions, which is very interesting. While the last weapon that was showcased within the demo was the Bulldog, and that one has a description, so I don't know what the consistency issue is here. Of course, this is the July 2020 gameplay demo, and I'm sure a lot of things have changed within that time frame. We do know that the Ravager has actually changed from a more of aggressive damage dealing weapon to much more of a area of denial kind of weapon, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. So this next section I want to go into how these weapon variants may be implemented into Halo Infinite. We do know that there's gonna be forward bases that you can go and capture to basically work on your loadouts, stated here by an employee at 343. Uh, UNSC forward operating base that's now been overrun by Banished. Oh, do I go down there before I go to the main main story beat or and, and, and take that back? And then maybe I can pull in the vehicle to go use. I can uh, uh, gather up different, you know, my loadout, change out my loadout to what I wanna do from the things that I've unlocked. So with one dev saying you unlock through gameplay, the other one you could say you get to access things you've unlocked throughout the game, meaning that most likely these forward bases are gonna be locations where you can actually go in and pick up your weapons and maybe some weapon variants if they're available. I would love to see us have a variety of ways to earn these weapon variants, ways like defeating enemies or high level targets that we've seen previously on the map, or also just scavenging and exploration of the world. 
have a nice variety of it rather than like we've seen previously like with Halo 5 where it was just like a weapon hidden away in a corner. You know, it's it's a cool way to kind of like go find that, but not as necessarily engaging and variety is also very important as well to keep it more fun. Another really important part to take into consideration is how these weapons may be implemented into multiplayer as I would say likely because from a known insider Clobro mentions about a BTB 2.0 mode and how it may have some pelican drops involved with it as well. Pelican drops might be the way like you could in Warzone to call in for your rack weapons, maybe the same way you call in for weapon variants in the multiplayer for Halo Infinite. Though I would highly suspect weapon variants to not be part of the 4v4 experience as it really messes with the balance, but I think with larger scale modes, this is something that could actually work. As Warzone was one of the most popular modes, always like the top 5 most played playlists in Halo 5. And with Halo Infinite's 10 year plan, you can most likely, I mean very much guarantee that there's going to be post-launch weapons going to be added into the game as well. We may have this with Halo 5 as well, but likely I feel like these will be put into the season pass, which has been confirmed by 343, stating here, saying, We're working across the studio to form the long-term roadmap for Halo Infinite. What should players look forward to each season? We'll be partnering with the community to plan how the game is going to grow and evolve over time. And then how do we work with you to ensure that our roadmap can be communicated effectively? So another big part of influence, which I think 343 is going to be taking part of, is from Call of Duty with their seasonal pass model that they've been rocking with for the last two years or so. Each new season, they come out with a roadmap showcasing the different types of content that's going to be coming into the game throughout the season. Most likely, it's going to be like an initial launch and then a mid-season update, maybe some trickle of new microtransactions or new customization being added throughout the season as maybe like a weekly update. And something maybe a little bit more detailed like we have here with this example from Destiny 2 for the season of The Chosen, you can see how the dates are kind of marked out showcasing when to expect these different items and events to come throughout the entire season. So putting something like a weapon variant within the season pass will really give players incentive to grind out your season pass to increase increase that engagement to get more people playing the game for a longer period of time. Now 343 has stated that they don't want to create a grind machine with Halo Infinite, but they also need to make sure that you don't earn everything within a single day obviously, so there's a fine balance that 343 needs to do to get this just right. Now this all might sound a little scary when you first hear it, but also keep in mind that Halo Infinite's multiplayer is going to be free to play, and so they're going to have to find some ways to monetize it where this monetization of the customization is going to be the main driver and main source of income when it comes to Halo Infinite surviving and 343 surviving as a business. And the third part I want to talk about in this video is how crazy should these variants be? As we all know, Halo 5 is the only game out there that really has any kind of variants for us to play around with, and some of them can be pretty crazy. Though I would say that most are minor performance boosts like higher damage output, longer range effectiveness and stuff like that, but some like the Void's Tear for example, cause like small black holes pulling enemies together to the center of the shot kind of crazy when you think about it. so how far should 343 go with tweaking the knobs when it comes to the weapon variants because it's very likely that these variants will make their way into multiplayer but in what capacity we don't really know if they are in multiplayer this greatly affects how drastic they can change up the variants so obviously there needs to be some form of balance in mind when making these weapons because you want to have a connected experience between the campaign and multiplayer so when you're picking up that weapon it still performs the same way but maybe like the damage output's a little different. Personally, I would like to see tweaks to base models of your standard weapons with exaggerated features. So maybe the variant of the M40 shoots maybe like a little bit faster, but has higher recoil, or maybe like the VK-78 commando rifles, if there's gonna be multiple of them, have specific kinds of rounds that does like maybe explosive damage, but has a smaller clip. I think maybe having a rocket launcher like the AD Victorian, which shot like four or five rockets at once, or like the Void's Tear, which creates a black hole effect, might be a little bit too much for the multiplayer experience, but again, we won't really know until we actually get a chance to see some actual multiplayer gameplay. But let me know what your thoughts are on weapon variants in the comments down below. If you guys missed any content from me recently or been out of the loop for Halo, make sure you check out the videos on the screen right now. I've got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.